Welcome to unit one of week three with a lecture on managed product structure and bill of material. My name is Jens Erb. I'm the product manager for this solution built as part of SAP Enterprise product development, and I will lead you through this unit. Let's start with a look at the scope of this enterprise product structure. Enterprise product structure is a hierarchical decomposition of a single product or an entire product line. So it may have variants. It may be a 150% structure or 180% structure. It defines all the relevant constituents across the entire product life cycle. For those objects in the structure that have a logistical relevance, products or materials can be assigned. A bill of material can be derived from this modular product structure. And last but not least, um, the process may span across enterprise product structure and SAP S4 HANA or ERP. The first um, application that we, we are offering in EPD, in Enterprise Product Development, is called Product Explorer. It allow, allows to manage the products in a folder structure. You can define versions for the product that are maintained as part of the Product Explorer and shown in the Product Explorer. The versions are controlled via a locking mechanism that ensures that those versions that are locked cannot be changed anymore. There can be documents attached to the products. And very important is the synchronization of those products between S4 HANA or ERP, meaning ECC, and enterprise product development. The core application besides the product explorer um, allows to manage the, the product structure as a hierarchy of multiple levels. You can switch between different views of that hierarchy. So it can be a single level structure with further on uh, substructures that you can open step by step, or it can be a multi-level tree structure. There's a selection mechanism, so you can choose via the date validity and explode the structure according to a certain date. So only those objects are shown that are valid, um, that have a valid date uh, during the, uh, the inside a certain period of validity. Um, and you can also view the component details right away from the structure. Also here in the product structure, documents can be attached and are maintained next to it. Besides the pure structure um, management and representation, um, you can also have a thumbnail um, next to the objects of the structure and a 3D visualization. So you can also navigate via the 3D object that is shown next to the product structure and vice versa. You can cross highlight um, between the objects, be it leaf objects or um, assembly objects, structure objects, um, and the 3D object that is shown next to it. Let's have a look at um, the scope that we are aiming for um, with this new product structure. So here you see the scope um, of a S4 synchronization based uh, scenario where we start with an engineering bomb in S4 HANA 
it is synchronized over to the business technology platform where enterprise product development is built um, and synchronized into the enterprise product structure. So this product structure represents the content coming from S4. And at this time, we are already introducing the versioning concept. So new versions are then with each synchronization can be created, but it depends on the way how customers are working in S4 HANA and depending on the change of the objects, new versions may be created in the synchronization. From here, from the engineering bomb, we are supporting with a dedicated application, a handover engineering bomb to manufacturing bomb. Based on that, or next to this uh, manufacturing bomb, a routing is defined, and we're currently also further working on this handover and creation hand in hand between the routing and the MBOM. And the result from the MBOM that is defined uh, as a result of the handover is then synchronized back to the MBOM in S4 HANA to support subsequent processes. The next step of the handover, um, which is a, a separate lecture here, um, as part of this um, class, class, open SAP class, um, we are also going to support a handover to an asset and service management structure. So the service structure can, can then be service uh, created with the service relevant objects, um, which is then the basis for the creation in the subsequent processes um, of equipments and serialized products. Besides this BOM-based um, scenario, we are also going to support a richer scenario, um, which is representing a full enterprise product structure um, with a top-down creation approach. So this enterprise or engineering reference structure here can be created top-down in EPD in this scenario. Um, and then the different experts from the different disciplines are working into this structure, be it from CAT design, mechanical, electric, electronic, CAD systems, or also software development. Um, these objects that are, are then um, maintained in the respective context of the overall structure and managed inside this um, engineering reference structure. There's also the process that you see on the left side, starting with the requirement model with a functional view and a logical view on the product and then um, this Menu or um, physical face or physical structure, as it's often called, the product structure here, engineering reference structure, can be created based on the logical model. From here, the handover is also going to support be su uh, support this um, handover of the enterprise product structure including the bill of material, which is inside of it, but also the flexible modular nodes on top of it, um, from engineering to manufacturing. The bill of material is basically um, a certain sub view um, on this overall structure. It can be derived out of it and then synchronized over to S4 HANA. And as shown before, we are also aiming for a handover to the equipment reference structure here with the service relevant parts, um, which is then also going to be the reference, the let's say template for the creation of a um, bill of material with the service relevant components in it, um, which is then going to be synchronized over to the S4 system again. From here, let's have a look at a system demonstration. How does the um, enterprise product structure uh, look like today? 
Here we see the product structure on the left side with um, the components and with um, assembly nodes. So it's a multi-level product structure. Um, you see the, the different uh, sub-assemblies. Um, and on the right side, there's the 3D visualization of this product um, where you can see you have all the capabilities, the functionalities um, to um, measure and to, to cut um, in, in different planes um, across along the product here in 3D. Um, there's a cross highlighting between the product structure and um, the 3D visualization. So I can select a part on the right side and on the left side, you see that um, the respective um, assembly as a, the context of this part here is selected in that case. If I open the assembly, um, this structure node here um, representing an assembly, I can also select in the structure a specific part and on the right side in the visual, I see that this part is highlighted. Um, all the um, parts that are next to this one um, inside the assembly are also shown and the rest of the parts um, in this overall product structure is shown in a transparent way. Let's close the um, 3D visualization and also the, the detailed view um, of the um, component that was selected there and focus on the product structure itself. So um, we see that we have the validity date here in the structure maintained. Um, each part has a validity that might be a change number coming from the S4 system in this case, because the entire structure was replicated over from S4. Um, and I can narrow down the structure to see the exact um, view of the structure at a certain date. So for example, selecting last year, December 5th, um, I can see how did the structure look at this validity date. So all the um, objects here in the structure um, are, have been valid at this time. So you see the change of the structure compared to before. Um, there's another possibility to narrow down the structure using um, the baseline mechanism that's coming from our EPD um, configuration management application, um, where you can define kind of snapshots of the product um, that you keep uh, in the system. For example, uh, at a certain milestone, when you did a review meeting, you keep the structure at that point of time with all the versions of the objects in the structure that were um, valid at that time, um, or this point where you did the snapshot. Um, and you can also, as soon as you maintain baselines here, um, also filter down the structure according to the baseline. Um, next to the structure itself, you see on the header that there are different um, attributes maintained. So there is a BOM version. That's the exactly the version or this, this the, the, that was created when this structure was synchronized coming from S4. Um, and we have a locking mechanism here next to it. You see this version here currently is unlocked. Um, but as soon as you lock it here, um, there's no way to change the structure anymore. Also the synchronization, um, if there's a change coming over or another synchronization done from S4, uh, is creating a new version of the structure. Um, so we are reflecting in the synchronization service, different ways of working in S4. Um, and depending on if there's a, a new change number and the, it was released, a new um, change status was created in S4, that means a new version is created automatically. But um, also with this docking mechanism on the EPD side, um, we can also control um, the versioning as it's done in EPD product structure. Um, you also see the 
product uh, itself has a version and also a minor version, which is a kind of uh, different iterations of the product. Um, and we can navigate over from this um, product structure page to the product detail page um, to see further attributes as they are maintained. And here in this um, application, you can directly do the locking, for example. Um, you can see that there are um, different parameters set. So it's uh, currently unlocked. It shows the latest um, version. And if I um, open this version uh, page with this um, window here, I can see that there might be several versions and I can select from the different versions that are maintained here in the system to show the exact version that I want to see. Next to the attributes that are all coming in this case from the S4 system, because here we replicated it over, um, you can see that there may also be attached documents that were um, also synchronized over from S4. Um, and the document itself can have versions. Um, and with each version of the document, there can be different um, document originals maintained. So the attachments um, of the real files are shown here in this view. In the presentation, we've seen that the product structure is um, maintaining all the defined constituents of a product across the different domains along the life cycle of the product. On top of the product structure, we are offering functionalities, capabilities to support a handover, for example, from engineering to manufacturing, and also a capability that we call configuration management, where we currently, um, we also saw here the baseline um, that is defined during the configuration management process. The bill of material of the product is one of the representations of its structure. Um, but we will work also in the future on uh, more objects on flexible nodes that will be um, possible to be maintained on top of the bill of material component objects. Um, we are supporting the synchronization of the bill of material from S4HANA and um, ERP. A strong versioning and locking mechanism is supported in the product structure. We can explode the structure following date validity, validity um, or a baseline. We can have um, documents attached to the objects of the product structure and of the product itself. Um, and we are supporting the 3D visualization with a cross highlighting mechanism between the structure and the visualization. With this, we are at the end of the lecture. And I'd like to thank you for your interest.